Hello everybody, it's I, WebFox, and happy Manga Monday! This is a new series that I'm going to try out, that I've been hoping to do for a while, where I just go over uh, some manga that I read. I'm going to try to stick with uh, Volume 1s, as I'm not much of a manga fan, except for Gundam, Gunsmith Cats, Pokemon, and now Resident Evil. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the manga I read, I'll be getting from Dollar Bins. Hey, that allowed me to experience uh, more manga and writings and arts of various people. But as I just mentioned, Resident Evil, that will be our first manga. Resident Evil, Marhawa Desire. Checking online, this manga is a five volume series, taking place right before Resident Evil 6. So I guess it's safe to assume it takes place after Resident Evil 5. It follows Professor Doug Wright and Ricky Tozawa as they investigate a mysterious T virus outbreak in an isolated but very elite prestige academy school deep in the jungle of Asia somewhere. One well-known Resident Evil character is also featured in this book, Chris Redfield. Story and art is by Naoki Serizawa. Priced at $13 from Fizz Media. I really enjoy this manga. I'm a big zombie fan and been a fan of the Resident Evil games since 2. This manga appears to be slightly bigger than your usual manga, namely my Pokemon one, so I had to put it on a totally different shelf for slightly bigger books. Like pretty much all manga, it's all black and white, except for a few special print pages in the front. They have a bit of color, but about half of them are just total red and black. I really do love the art, it is very detailed, from the machinery, the environment, the characters, and, well, the zombies. This is one art style where with the little horror elements really do make me cringe at how well it's drawn and sort of sickens me a bit if I stare at it too long. I don't get that from much art. With the basics out of the way, I'm gonna go into spoiler territory now. So Doug and his nephew, Ricky, are off investigating this university, academy, or whatever. At the request of Doug's old girlfriend, who so happens to now to be the head of the academy. Being set in the center of the jungle, two days from any near village, with plenty of on-road and off-road trails in between them, it's a very isolated spot. They come to investigate one zombie who's already killed one student. The head of the academy wants to keep it secret, so very, very few people know about it. And it's quickly evident that she'll go to whatever means that it takes to keep it a secret and to keep the two there so they can solve what's happening. I really am enjoying this story, and it has me hooked. It has a real mystery vibe to it. What type of T-virus is this? Who's doing it? What are their plans? You know there's a bigger scheme involved, the way that the zombies are placed and who they attack and when they attack. This is not your normal T-virus. The zombies are pretty average, but as we see, when somebody gets bitten, they don't turn. So unless this is a special strain of the T-virus, then some people are have the vaccine and not know it. Like in Resident Evil 5, we got a mysterious cloak figure walking around holding some little box. Now you can tell that that person is definitely behind it all, whoever that person is. As for Chris Redfield, he's introduced by punching a zombie dog and taking down a liquor with just a pistol. Badass. We're introduced to him, Pierce, and a character that I don't know, Mara, as they clear out some area in some undisclosed location somewhere, because this Resident Evil universe about every terrorist cell ever known and will ever be has bioweapons, and apparently they're all released at the same time. I'm pretty sure Pierce is from Resident Evil 6, but then again, besides the demo, I haven't played much of that game. They're introduced, and they're off to see the professor for one reason or another, so that's they're finding that he's not where he's supposed to be, and so... I think about sometime in Volume 2, more likely 3, that actually has Chris on the cover, they'll come across the Academy themselves. There's even a little bonus episode extra story in the back, going over Rob BG as she clears some of rooms heavily invested with monsters from the first Resident Evil game, while doing some very sexy poses and very skin-tight outfits. With all that said, I enjoy the writing, the artwork is very good. I definitely want to read more and can't wait to find out what happens. It'll be about a week until Volume 2 comes out, and then Volume 3 should be about a month and a half after that or so. Definite must read for Resident Evil fans and zombie fans to get a mystery aspect to a zombie story. From what I could tell, this won't fill in any gaps in Resident Evil 6, which I hear there's quite a few of, but then again, I still haven't played the game that much, so maybe they've already answered a few questions about it. So thank you for listening to the first of Manga Monday. I'm pretty sure next week I'm going to dust off a old volume of Pokemon and go over that.